listening to the AfterBuzz TV Network. Now the largest new media platform on the web and your number one source for after-show entertainment. Very good, Gene. From the AfterBuzz Studios in Los Angeles, California, presented by Maria Menunos and Bing.com, and streaming live thanks to Akamai Technologies, this is AfterBuzz TV's Project Runway After Show. We'll break down tonight's episode and get you all the latest news and gossip. If you'd like to buzz in on tonight's show, you can buzz us at 424-256-1729. That's 424-256-1729. And now, another post-game wrap-up show for your favorite TV show. It's AfterBuzz TV's Project Runway After Show. Hi everyone, Bing is for doing in here at AfterBuzz TV. We're doing another Project Runway Season 12, Episode 3, an unconventional Coney Island recap. This was a really fun episode. I'm Alina, and this is my lovely co-host, Virginia. Hey guys, how y'all doing tonight? How funny was this episode? It was great, I loved it. All of it, like all of the colors were fun. Um, I loved some of the outfits, some of them, even though they were awful, I loved. So yeah, it was a great episode. We have to address the fact that we're twins tonight. We are absolutely we twins. We are both feeling the royal blue dresses. Yes, it's like the it's identical the dress. Same shoes almost. Yeah. Just all us. Right. <laughs> great minds, great minds yes. think alike. Yeah. Let's get started because there's a lot to cover on this episode. And we're going to have Kate. I don't want to butcher her last name, so go ahead and tell us. Oh, I know. She's going to have to tell us that because okay. I, I don't want to butcher it either. But we okay. have the designer from the show calling in Kate. Yes. Yay. And she was a contestant from the previous uh, season as well, so she's going to call in and talk to us. Hopefully give us some behind-the-scenes gossip details because we have some characters this season. Oh, my gosh. Sandro. Oh. He is hilarious. Like, I love to hate him. I? No, I would love him. <laughs> I don't know what it is with me and the Eastern Europeans on this show. You do love him. But, oh, I love him. Yeah. He, I, I have, like, quotes on quotes on quotes. Yeah, he has some great one-liners. It he, definitely keeps it interesting. He's the best. All right, let's get to the challenge. It's an, another unconventional challenge. They go to Coney Island. How surprised were you when you see Heidi Klum waking them up at 5 a.m.? Do you think she really got up then? I think you know, I think she probably laid in bed while they did hair and makeup for her because she looked fabulous like always and you know she didn't wake up like two to get started. No way. No way. So she shows up, of course, with perfectly wavy hair, a royal blue blazer, and she wakes them up and they head to Coney Island where they see um, I, d I didn't get the gentleman's name, but he's a representative of Yo Play Frozen Yogurt and Tim Gunn. Yep. So Tim explains the challenge. You're gonna give out samples of this new frozen yogurt. You're gonna collect descriptive words from the samplers. And finally, you're gonna use three of these descriptive words to define your theme and go with um, and the direction of your design. Yeah, I thought it was like, it, I mean, it was a very interesting two-part challenge because, you know, they had to get these descriptive words and then they had to, we'll explain later, go get their fabric. And so, you know, when they're saying words like luxurious and I don't remember some of the other luxurious, ones. Luxurious, tangy, um, temptuous. Yeah, some of those words, I'm thinking now that once we see how they get their fabric, I'm thinking none of those words match with those fabrics. And fluffy. Fluffy. And fluffy. what is fluffy exactly? <laughs> <laughs> Sandro. Oh, Sandro. Um, and also, another little twist, it's the first team challenge. First team challenge, yeah. I don't think anybody's ever excited about that first team challenge, and I'm sure when Kate calls in, she'll let us know, because she was on the season where it was all teams. But luckily for her, it seemed to work out this time. Maybe yeah. she had the experience, so she kind of knew what to do, like when she was bossing two around last season. I know. <laughs> oh, my God, I almost forgot about that. So they get paired up. Um, Let's read off. I'm going to read off really quick the teams. Alexander and Justin, Kate and Helen, Jeremy and Ken, Sue and Sandro. Interesting couple. Um, Brayden and Karen, Dom and Alexandria, and Miranda and Timothy. Another in interesting pairing. They had 15 minutes to hand out the samples and collect the words, and then they were off to Luna Park Amusement. Or Luna Amusement Park, I should say. 
Yeah, and they, you know, they couldn't have had to have been too good at some of these games. Because, you know, you go to these, like, theme parks or whatever, and it's so hard to win these challenges. Well, explain. Explain what you're talking about. So they were. They said they had to, instead of going to Mood and getting fabric, they were going to take $100 off of their bank cards, and they were going to go play all of the carnival games, which are, I mean, that's so fun. I love playing games, so Me it too. seems like, you know, awesome. But anytime you go, I don't know, maybe it's because I go to Disneyland too much and they, like, rig those because they're so expensive. <laughs> But, you know, like, you never actually win any of those games. I know. That's why it's so exciting when you win, like, a stupid the huge stuffed animal. stuffed animal. Yeah. 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 After spending $75. But, but it seems is, like they were all winning. And I don't think any of those, well, I'm not going to say any of them were too athletic. But, I mean, they're fashion designers. They don't necessarily have to be too athletic. And they were winning giant unicorns. I, and, you know. Yeah, I think there was some favoritism um, going on. And they were definitely getting some free prizes but we have to mention that the prizes were actually going to be what they use as fabric. Right. So they had to kind of strategically think not just like what fun games do I want to play. It's like what fabric am I going to use or what am I going to use for fabric? How much of, you know, one color am I going to use? And I think that was what was smart for a lot of people. They instantly started thinking, you know, what they were going to use. And it had to go with the theme of the three words that they had. So let's say the theme was fun. They're not going to want to grab the somber looking brown bear you know right they want something bright and cool so it, exactly. it took a lot of thinking even though it was a fun challenge yeah i mean i particularly liked the part where they were you know shooting the little gun water gun straight at the thing and sandra was like oh it's just like peeing at yeah. the wall <laughs> like who thinks of these things oh sandra does and what did you compare Sandro to? Let's just get that out oh, of the way. Well, other than, oh, <laughs> well, first of all, I felt, I feel like he's like a Russian prostitute, like the male version of a Rus Russian prostitute. Like he's, he's just like sleazy with his chest hair hanging out. And he's so flamboyant. So flamboyant. But then it's like, is he a gay prostitute? Like I haven't figured it out yet. I don't know, but he's fabulous and he's only 28 years old. Does he not look Which 38 Which is or very surprising. And then he like flails around with his arms and like skips through the streets. I mean, I just don't understand him. He goes from like freaking out and dropping F-bombs to crying at his sewing machine. He's just very animated. And I'm like, is he just here? I feel like part of it is he's here for the drama. I just want to applaud the casting directors of Project Runway <laughs> this season because Sandro is such a gem. He is. He's my gem. He's a diamond. He's fabulous. And he is fabulous. He is hilarious. I also have to one last mention. I mean, it's not the last mention. I'm lying. But that outfit on the runway, the his, old school Versace shirt. Yeah, with his um, Luigi overalls. Throwback to Biggie Small. Yes, with, with the one clip, not the two clips. Only one side was clipped. So that was like what, crisscross? Listen, 90s hip hop yeah. reenacted. Crisscross and Biggie Smalls all in one <laughs> outfit. Yep, love it. Love it. All right, let's move on. Challenge is amazing, and they grab their prizes. They have these silly, silly prizes, stuffed um, animals. They have these plastic-looking dolphins. Ice Timothy, cream cones. Ice cream cones. Timothy wins his precious unicorn. What is with his unicorn talk? Like, unicorns aren't horses with horns. They're <laughs> elephants? They're Did he say elephants? No, they're closer to hippos. Hippos, because they're clove. But or no, or rhinos. I don't know, but he's really into some sort of like fantasy of some sort that he knows this crazy knowledge. I, he's a unicorn expert, apparently. He knows more than anyone I've ever you know, I, I definitely felt like at the very beginning when Mar Miranda, I'm not a fan of hers. I feel like she's just like a Debbie Downer. Like she's all like she always is having issues and she's always like, oh, poor me. You know, and she's been talking trash on Timothy ever since the first episode because they're both from Wisconsin. I don't know where. Is it Wisconsin or Milwaukee? Milwaukee is in Wisconsin. Yeah. Okay. So they're from Milwaukee. And yeah, and she's just like, oh, he doesn't deserve to be here. But it's like, why do you deserve to be here? Like, he got on here just like you did. And, you know, I feel like she kind of thought he was stealing his thunder from day one because, you know, they're two designers from the same city. It's not all about her. And it's a pretty random city, Milwaukee. For know, fashion, at least. Especially, yeah fashion before we get into the workroom because there's a lot to cover uh, tell everybody about serial buddies and iTunes well if you guys haven't got a chance to um, go on to iTunes and watch serial buddies you can go on there and completely download it it's a hilarious movie if you like Napoleon Dynamite or anything like that you will absolutely love it it was made by Maria Menounos uh, or she's 
actually in the movie, Maria Menounos. And um, it's just really fun. If you guys haven't had a chance to check it out, make sure you do. Also, while you're there, be sure to rate us, comment, like us, share it with friends. Also on YouTube, we always love your comments. Um, it's just fun to see, you know, what you guys predict and we love the feedback. So keep it coming, guys. Thanks. All right, work room. The two couples or pairings that stood out to me, I shouldn't call them couples, <laughs> is Sandro and Sue, and of course, Timothy and Miranda. Yeah, everybody else just kind of flies under the radar because there's so much drama going on. I mean, you can't, like, you can't all have drama going on. You kind of just need to Well, at work, Coney work, work. Island, when Sandro and Sue got paired up, they were both pretty happy. They were skipping around, and Sue was really ecstatic because she thinks Sandro is such a fun guy. So when we get to the workroom and they're bickering, I was kind of shocked. I wasn't really so shocked. I mean, Sandro is uh, chauvinistic and oh, really, why would you? <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, he's just—I don't—he's like the epitome of a chauvinist. Like when a he, woman listens in a man, it's cool. It's good. Like it's cool. He, he That's what he said. Yeah, he literally expects her to be his assistant, and you know, and then she can't even thread a bobbin. So I don't feel really that bad for her because it's like if you can't really do it you have to be his assistant because still like it's episode three and you haven't figured out how to use your own machine that's kind of a problem um so yeah i wasn't really too surprised and then it was just funny because she was like i really should have thought about this sooner like you didn't see him freak out the last episode when he couldn't get the steamer to work i know he uh he's definitely hilarious and his crying at the sewing machine <laughs> kills me. It, <laughs> Cause he, he does like the whole, like he shakes and he's just, oh my God. But he's pretty mean to her. He's, he's horrible. Like yeah. with a capital H, like he is horrible. And you know, F-bombs here and there. And then he was rude to Tim Gunn. I mean, yeah, I just- very unprofessional. I just don't know. Like he's obviously not gonna stay around or win or just thinking about him in the fashion world, like he's not gonna make friends. People are not gonna wanna work with him. Well, he already has a vendetta against Zach Posen for whatever reason, he, or he thinks that Zach's against him. Yeah. And he's even mentioning it to Tim. What was that about? I feel like maybe he like likes Zach or maybe. something and he kind of wants his attention. I don't know. Yeah, he kept saying like, Zach is going to think this is too much. Da -da 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 -da. Yeah. And Tim was like, well, that's because he's done, like, the trashiest things, like the lady bits hanging out. And, you know, it's just he needs to tone it down. And that's where, you know, these team challenges would have been good for him because, you know, it's not just his design. It's, you know, someone else's set of eyes. But he really didn't want to do that. He was not willing to compromise. He didn't care what Sue's design was. He basically scrapped it. I don't even know what Sue's design was. It, well, he didn't let us see it, and he scrapped it, and when she said, well, just go with your design, do what you think, he was like, great. <laughs> well, she's like, I'll be your assistant. He's like, yeah, fabulous. Yeah, I mean, that's just, I, I just feel bad because some people are just pushovers, and it's like you really need to stand up for yourself. Luckily, I mean, nothing, they were just kind of like in the middle or whatever. Nothing really happened with them. But, yeah, I, I definitely think she's going to think twice next time she works with anybody. Yes, she definitely will. Um, Helen and Kate, on the other hand, were like lovebirds. They and were BFFs. BFFs, and it's kind of shocking because first episode we hear Helen say, oh, I, I really hope it's not Kate coming back because she was such a bitch last season. Yeah, and, you know, I thought, because, you know, we watched the recap of last season, and there was definitely some editing that she could have been perceived as bitchy, but um, I'm pretty sure that Michelle was the queen bitch of that season. So, you know, I feel like Kate just got some bad editing. And, you know, whenever you, I, I feel like she's very type A, you know, like she knows what she wants and she knows how to do it. And she's good at what she does. Sure. So, I mean, it, you can call it a bitch. Or you can just say like, she's very strong, strong willed. But I definitely think Helen ate her words and, you know, I mean, you know how it ends, but I think it was good for them to work together. Yeah, and Helen even um, admitted it. I believe it was in the workroom. She said, you know, I regret even calling her a bitch, or I can't believe I did, because she turns out to be so nice, and she's really this challenge, or being paired up with her in this challenge is to my advantage. And I respect that, because it, it is to her advantage, because... Kate has been really helpful with all these designers. Yeah, well, and then if you see last week her construction without 
the cups, I mean, that's like what, you know, Kate specializes in are those really nice corsets. And so I think, you know, her design with, you know, her background, those two together really pulled off a great look tonight. Yeah, they did. It was amazing. You can't, I can't believe they made that look from hats. I wanted that look. Like, yeah, that was such a fun dress. It's beautiful. Um, then we go on to Timothy and Miranda. So two very different personalities. You've got Timothy, who's very optimistic initially and, you know, a dreamer. And then Miranda, who's pretty harsh and cold. But however, she was trying to make it work initially, though. She was. And yeah, Timothy, I feel like he has his head in the clouds and he's just kind of floating along very happily on that unicorn, yeah. you know, and <laughs> Miranda just burst his bubble and then she just lost it. Like, I've never seen like she was horrible to him. Like, I, mm -hmm. I felt so mm -hmm. bad for him because she he, was meaner than Sandra. You can tell he is like a delicate, sensitive soul. And, you know, he takes things very seriously. And, then, you know, to be put down like that with your peers all around, that has to feel horrible. He was already doubting himself, you know, and they were having such a bad time. And then to just be put through the ringer like that, instead of saying like, you know, we can get through this, I really feel like that was what their downfall was. Because instead of saying like, how can we fix this? You know, she just goes and like puts his, wh wherever he was, puts him down like 10, 10 more and yeah. Well, I, I get what you're saying and I think she was way too harsh and uh, unprofessional. However, he was being pretty annoying, and I would get mad, too, if I walked out of the workroom and he has a completely different design without, you know, it's a team challenge. Yeah, I mean, I definitely think that I would probably want to kill him if I had to work with him also, because designers like that, it was kind of like Patricia last season. Like, they, they're on their Great own comparison. planet, and, you know, they just have their own thing going on, and to work with them, it's it's pretty much impossible because you don't know what's in their head and you can't get in there and they're just not fun to work with. So That's a great comparison. <laughs> He's very Patricia like, but she did lose it. And I think she took it a little too overboard with the name calling and the yelling. And even Helen went in there like, you know, you need to get it together and go grab him. Which I am really starting to like her. I thought at the very beginning of the episode or season, she was going to be like this badass bitch that was just like mean to everybody. Mm -hmm. But she's like such a softy. I don't know where it comes from because she just looks like rough. Yeah. And it's like her work, too. She's really ed she's edgy looking. She's got all the tattoos and the dark hair. And then she makes these feminine, beautiful gowns. And her personality is kind of sweet, too, you know? Yeah, never would have guessed. Never would have guessed. Looks are deceiving. Don't judge a book by its cover. All right. <laughs> Tim Gunn walks in and he says, I've never seen so much flotsam and jetsam in my life. Tim Gunn in his vocabulary. Yeah, he's fabulous. Have you ever heard those two words in your life? Well, yeah. Um, Do you know what they they're are? They're the eels on um, The Little Mermaid. Flotsam and jetsam. Really? Yeah, they're well. That's the only time ever I've ever heard them. They're yeah, they're Ursula's two eels that you know, like when Ariel goes into her secret lair or whatever. Thank you for enlightening me because. But I don't think that's the actual way that you're supposed to use them. I'm pretty sure it's. Not. I'm gonna look it up. Somebody tell because us because I have never used or heard those words. But I love <laughs> Tim Gunn for doing that. Yeah. Um. So he says that he walks in and he gives some constructive criticism to the pairings. He likes Alexandra and Dom's very, um, I thought it looked like a Harujaku, Harujaku outfit. They mentioned they wanted it to look like funky Japanese. And I like that they played off the fact that they were making costumes out of these amusement park prizes. Yeah, I definitely think it was just something more playful because, you know, we always see everybody makes a gown, you know, and it was just refreshing to see like this big pop of blue and, you know, really big funny mouth. And, you know, fashion isn't just what you see on the runway. Like, I felt like it was really nice, you know, streetwear that you could see somebody, you know, rocking a cool outfit. I feel like even like you'd see celebrities here in L.A. wearing something crazy like that, like Miley Cyrus or, you know, just something really fun or like Kelly Osbourne. Yes, that's a good way to put it. And it still came out tasteful. Yeah, like the styling was perfect. Like her hair was cute and you could definitely see where they were going from head to toe. It was a perfect look. It was a perfect look. And, and Tim liked it. He said it, you know, it was risky, but he was impressed. He was also impressed with Brayden and I, I don't know what Karen I, Karen. Um, he said there's nothing like it. 
Yeah, I mean, I kind of, I, I don't know, I wasn't really feeling it. I felt like it was just, um, you know, those really cheap shower curtains. Yeah. Like, that's what I kind of felt like. It was just all glued together. And then there was, like, it was, like, blue and green, and then there was, like, a patch of brown, and then, like, a, a big. white poof. It looked like a big cotton ball. Yeah. So I wasn't really feeling it, but I could see where they were going. I felt like if it was avant-garde, it should have been bigger. Okay, I get what you're saying, but I did appreciate the fact that they tried to go avant-garde versus doing something simple just because it's unconventional. Right. However, you're right, that fabric, and a couple people used it, was terrible. You just can't get past it. Yeah. And the colors. It was just like distracting. The ugliest color blue and yellow. and. <laughs> <laughs> but what are you going to do? Um, so then that's when we also hear Sandro get really unprofessional and berate, you know, Zach, Sue... It was pretty funny. Um, Timothy is worried about Tim. Um, Timothy. Tim is worried about Timothy and Miranda. He compares their outfit to a craft project and a Disney outfit. Well, they really did look like it. Yeah, those colors were terrible. They remind me, if you remember on Bell. Saturday Night Live, the ambiguously gay duo. It was like that exact blue and yellow. If you ever watched that cartoon when they had it on SNL, like uh -huh. that's all I could think of. I thought it looked like Belle's outfit before she became the princess. Or that. Yeah. I can see that. In um, Beauty and the Beast. Yeah. It was horrible, though. It and was then, like, terrible. the vest that he was working on, I feel like they were just so disconnected. I think this sketch that he was working on could have made it a little bit more hip because then when you see, um, what is it, Jeremy and Ken's blue pants that they make, I thought that would have been, you know, if they could have done something with, like, a vest with some, you know, chic capri pants or something. But the dress was just horrible. It was bad. I'm sorry. That's like the word of the night for me. Horrible. I know. But what can you what can you do? It is what it is. All right. Anybody else that stood out for you in the workroom? No, not so much in the workroom. I, there was just all that drama going on, and Sa you know, Sandro. Sandro being a little baby, crying at the at the sewing machine, and then Ken was like, "I've never seen a grown man cry like that." Like I haven't either. I of all the Project Runaway seasons, like, he looks like he's a man, but he cries like he's a little baby. Like, I don't understand. I loved when he went up, we kind of mentioned this, uh, to Brayden, I believe, and he goes, what means Flaffy? <laughs> oh, and he was showing him, like, the cotton, and he yeah. was like, Fluffy, and he was like, sexual meaning? Yeah, and then they, and then they whispered. Stuff. And I, I wish I knew what they'd whispered to each other, because I'm sure it was hilarious. I'm sure it was. And he just nodded, like, mm-hmm, mm -hmm. yep, that's that what it means. means. Flaffy, not Fluffy, Flaffy. <laughs> oh, Sandro, I love you. All right. Should we get to the runway? Yeah, or? let's let's. Yeah, ahead. because we have Kate calling in as well. Runway, um... Let's talk about Heidi's look like we always do. I love this edgy look. She had the mixed prints going on, the super slick hair. You know what? Heidi is so, she can do the really sexy feminine, and then she can do the, like, edgy feminine, um, sexy look, too, and, and look great. Yeah, she can rock anything, and that's why I'm so jealous, because I really wish I could be edgy, but I'm just girly. Like, I really like dressing girly, and I'll try to buy something edgy, and then I'm like, yeah, no, I'm not really ever going to wear that. It's, no, no, no oversized shirt tucked in with, no. like, like Prince. something studded maybe once no it doesn't happen <laughs> sorry all right all right runway we get um brayden and kate first they had the avant-garde look with the puffs on the shoulder and the puff on the hip on one side of the hip and it was one shouldered you know what i thought it was a little too much but i'm gonna say it was creative it was avant-garde at least they tried to do something outside of the box yeah and it definitely had some architectural structure to it so it wasn't just Here's a dress. Exactly. Dom and Alexandra, we kind of talked about this already. They had the, a really fun uh, character-like outfit. I don't know what to call it. It was like a top with a little short skirt. It almost looked like a dress. It was in the bright blue, and it had a face on it. I thought it looked like a Harujaku girl outfit. I loved it. It was really well done. Yeah, you know, I really liked the way that they did, like, the off-the-shoulder, and, you know, the eyeballs were on it, but one was, like, winking. It was, Or maybe it was a heart. I can't remember. But it was really, really cute, really playful, and you just got a good feeling. And, you know, even the judges said that. Like, they all said they smiled when they saw it because you can't help but smile because it's super cute. Yeah. Uh, Sandro and Sue, I thought for all the drama they had, they came up with a pretty decent dress. It was just a short little dress that was really ruffled and um, had the big skirt. And it looked like what a 
teenager would wear to like a homecoming dance to me. Yeah, it reminded it me of like a Katy Perry, like a messy Katy Perry look. That's what I thought of it, like Smurfs. Yeah, I wasn't super impressed, but I thought for all the drama they had, it was all right. Helen and Kate, they had a really structured red dress with what looked like peplum sticking out. And um, it was just amazing. I thought, wow, this doesn't even look like an unconventional challenge dress. It just looks like a beautiful yeah, it was perfect. And, you know, they really did some good editing because they had discussed making like a whole piece going up. But then once it was strapless, they left it strapless. And it was perfect the way that, you know, it cinched her waist in and it just had a really nice architectural look to it. It was really playful um, and just well executed all around. Yes, it was. And it was made from hats, from straw hats, sombreros. So crazy. And speaking of this outfit that Kate and Helen made, Kate's actually on the phone right now. So let's Let's uh, take her call. Hey, Kate. You there? Hello? Hello, hello. Um, I guess I'll try to have her call back. Okay. Well, she Hi. was on the air. She was. All right. Just a brief hold. <laughs> I mean, we're still connected, but I can't hear anyone. Kate, can you hear us? Any Hello, hello. Just keep going. She'll call back. All right. Um, let's move on to Alexander and Justin. They had a cocktail length dress. It had a ruffle on the bottom and some ruffle action going on top. It was that ugly blue color. I wasn't impressed. I thought it was really messy. I didn't like this. Hey, can you hear me? Hey, hey Kate. Kate. Uh, hi, guys. Sorry, I could hear you, but for some reason, you guys couldn't hear me. Hi. Thank you so much for calling in. We loved your look tonight. Oh, thank you. Well, thank you guys so much for having me. I'm so excited to be on with you. Yeah, we, I, well, I personally have loved you since last season, so um, we're so excited to talk to you. We loved your look. You were so gracious tonight when you just kind of gave it over to Helen, and she was so cute that she was like, yeah, I'll take it, but I loved it. You <laughs> just seem like the funnest person. Oh, my gosh. Well, you guys are so sweet. I mean, it was it's so funny because going into this season, I kind of expected all of the designers to hate me. And, you know, whenever I saw that Helen and I got paired at the same table, I'm like, oh, the producers think they're funny, don't they? Because this girl obviously hates me. And, you know, whenever we were on the team together, we both kind of laughed about it because we're like, it's so evident that everybody wants us to fight. But you know what? We're not going to give that to them because the reality is, we're both princesses. She's like my little dark princess, oh. and I'm the light princess, and together it's like this awesome team, and we just had so much fun working together. You guys definitely had a lot of chemistry, and work-wise, too, you were clicking so well, and that showed in the dress you made. So it was kind oh, of refreshing. Good. I'm so glad that came across on TV, because, I mean, I mean, you know me. I don't like team challenges, and <laughs> yeah. I especially hate unconventional challenges. <laughs> Yeah, so, so I was like, the, the so, fashion gods think they're funny, don't they? <laughs> yeah, so you had mentioned that the producers put y'all together, so it's not really Tim Gunn drawing it out of a hat. They actually put y'all on the teams like that? Well, no, I mean, like, so, you know, when we're first assigned our tables, that's kind of like the thing, like, that's, that's not random, but the button bag is totally random. Oh, so it's okay. Kind of like that's what I call the fashion gods, you know, <laughs> as fate would have it. Somehow Helen and I end up on the same team, and you know, it's like someone out there thinks they're funny, but we're gonna make it work. You know, we're gonna have fun, and it was kind of the same way with Miranda and Timothy. It's like Miranda is one of my best friends on the show too, and. From day one, she was dreading working with Timothy, and somehow they end up on the same team. It's like, you know, it's it's yeah. crazy how that worked out. That, that's what I was thinking. I was like, everybody that I kind of felt like was unexpected got picked together, but it always works out that way. I feel like maybe there's like some cold chips and hot chips in there. Like, you know how you can like rig a raffle, you know, like by making some <laughs> things hotter or colder? That's what I was like. They have to do something like that. Well, it could be editing too. You know, they could have asked her these questions like, who do you not want to get paired with? Right. Timothy, Timothy, Timothy. And then boom. 
with the magic of TV, it's we so hear crazy her say that. the way it works out, though, because the same the same kind of thing happened last season, which is how I know the button bag is for real, though, <laughs> because so many times I did not want to be with Michelle, and like I didn't end up with her, but I'm like, oh my gosh, I said it way too many times. I'm totally going to end up with her, but it didn't happen. So the button bag is totally real. However, I am still just as scared of it because fate can be a bitch. You know what I mean? Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, you said you were pretty close with Miranda. Is she a lot nicer? Are they just portraying her really, really awful right now? You know, you know what? They really are. And, I mean, Miranda is such a genuinely nice person. And this episode played out on TV so different than it actually happened. You know, what happened was basically Timothy and Miranda got paired up on the same team, and I honestly think they were both dreading it as much as the other one was. And Miranda told me that Timothy had said to her, basically at the beginning of the challenge, if we end up in the bottom, I'm throwing you under the bus, and <laughs> you should throw me under the bus as well. And I think that Timothy meant that in the best possible way, though. I think he kind of meant it like, hey, we should both be like, oh, so-and-so deserves to go home. I don't think he actually meant throw under the bus. But when you hear those words as a designer, you're just kind of like, okay, hey, we're supposed to be teammates. We shouldn't be planning to be on the bottom. We should be trying to win this. And so it kind of set Miranda off, which is totally understandable because who wouldn't be upset about that? Yeah, that totally and makes he's, sense. He's not the easiest and designer to work with either. Yeah, he's it, he's not the easiest to work with. But you know what? It's really funny how it played out because, in my opinion, they both pulled it together. And for not wanting to work together, I really don't think that their outfit was the worst on the runway, if you know what I mean. <laughs> I, I don't know how you guys feel. Tell me, I mean, what are you guys thinking? Who, who did you think was the worst? We got to know. Okay, if, if I had to say, I mean, it's going to be Brayden and Karen's look. And really? I know that that was more Brayden than Karen. Interesting. I thought that yeah. uh, Alexander and Justin was pretty messy. I wasn't feeling oh, that. Oh, yeah. However, when yeah. they took that little jacket off, it looked a lot better. Well, what were with those exactly. balls on that the side? That was the saving grace was when they took the jacket off. I feel like it looked a lot better. Yeah. And then, like, looking at Brayden's look. It's like, is this like Starry Night ran into a cloud? I don't really know. <laughs> so I want to know, what so far is your favorite season since you got to be on two of them? Do you like this cast better than the last one? Ooh. You know what? That is such a hard question. And two actually called me just yesterday. Oh, and he was talking to me about it. And he was like, do you like them better than me? And I'm like, <laughs> oh, my gosh. Like, no, I, it's so hard to pick. Everybody keeps asking me. And, you know, I made more friends on season 12, but I made best friends on both seasons. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. yeah. Like, I got so close to so many people on season 12, but I also got so close to, like, Patricia and Two and Sam last season. It's... Well it's so hard to pick, but I will say the challenges yeah. on season 12 are 10 times better. I was <laughs> just going to ask that. So you can't tell and us a favorite cast. million million worth of diamonds? You can't beat that. Yeah, how, how fabulous were those in person? Were you just like in awe? Because it looked so great, you know, on the TV. I can't oh imagine seeing all that in person. I was literally drooling because, I mean, we didn't really get to get up close to them until we were on the runway. And, I mean, I couldn't stop looking at Molly, my model. I was, like, staring at the diamonds. Yeah, so beautiful. And you mentioned that you prefer this season. Is that because you get to work on your own and really shine you know, as a designer? I mean, it's, I feel like it's so many different reasons. I really love getting to work on my own. Obviously, I'm a control freak, and that's fun for me. But I think it's just... The whole format of this season, having it be an anonymous runway, having the Tim Gunn save, having the fans vote as they watch, there's so many things that are new that they've adapted to get the fans more involved. 
which means so much to me because the fans are the reason why I'm back in the first place. Right. Yeah, because I definitely feel like last season was getting a little bit like, okay, we've seen this all before, but all of these new fun things that we get to see, like we get to see the gowns up close and, you know, like especially with your y'all's red dress, like we got to see the back of it. Like before it was just like, okay, it's a five second runway show that we don't really get to see all the details and really the couture that you guys put into some of these pieces. Yeah, and it's so funny because it's like, I mean, we literally sometimes have eight hours, no joke. Wow. And so just the, the viewers get to see now close up what we do in this short amount of time and that the judges get to see it. You know, sometimes we have time for French themes and sometimes we don't, but it's good that when we do, they can see that we tried, you know? Right. That is crazy. And... It really is, and so that means so much. And then just having Tim Gunn be able to watch the runway show, I mean, that's incredible. And it's so funny because you don't even know how much that means to us. Yeah. Last season, I feel like I didn't even know whether Tim Gunn liked me. Aww. And this season, I feel like I actually made him proud, you know, several times on the runway now. And it's so weird how how that actually impacts you, but I so badly want to make him proud. And so just seeing him smile as something comes down the runway, it just makes my day. So, Kate, correct me if I'm wrong, but you're a bridal gown designer, correct? Yes, that's correct. So if they have a bridal challenge, what's your strategy? I'm curious. So if, I, if there was a bridal challenge, I mean, obviously it's a lot of pressure on me. I mean, just the evening gown challenge, like, on episode two, when we had the diamond challenge, yeah. I had a meltdown secretly back at the back at the hotel room. I cried myself to sleep that night because mm -hmm. I was not ready for an evening wear challenge. I'm like, this is a make it or break it moment for my career. I can't lose this. So I was basically panicking, and I stayed up all night trying to think about, oh my gosh, what am I going to do? And you know, it took me that whole night before the runway to figure out, okay, I just need to pull myself together. I can finish this because, you know, at the end of work day one, I still had so much hand sewing to do, but I had to get myself together and make it work, basically. Wow, that's crazy. I, I can't imagine the pressure. Go ahead, Virgin. So I just have, well, a few other things to ask, but Sandro, is he really that crazy? <laughs> so... Sandro is fantastic. I love him to death. And, yes, he is that crazy. But what you have to know is, I mean, we're all crazy. <laughs> to be in this career, you you basically have to be absolutely insane. So I love him because he is 100% himself at any given moment. Wow. So if Sandro is mad, you will know. If Sandro <laughs> feels bad about something that he said, you will also know. <laughs> And it, I mean, it only gets better from here. Trust me, you need to keep watching. Uh, we wow. cannot wait. That's exciting news. So I did want to so tell you congratulations because Kate's actually getting married, too, in three months. Ooh, Not to two. Congratulations. Also, I should say also. <laughs> and so are you designing your dress? Yes. I am. You know, dresses, plural. <laughs> Okay, I that's what I was going to say, because, you know, I feel like since I'm around fashion so much, I could not decide on a dress, and I had, like, a million different styles I wanted to go, and, like, I appreciated so many different styles. You know, are you having that same kind of issue? Basically. Luckily, I've been engaged now for almost two years, so I've had quite a bit of time to decide what I want, but literally last week I changed my wedding colors, which is hysterical <gasps> to me because normally I'm so decisive. Wow. But literally as we speak, my fiance and I are in Savannah, which is where our wedding is. Aww. We had never seen our venue. Today we finally saw it in person. We just booked it because, I mean, with everything that's been going on, we haven't had time to get down here. I did so the same thing, so right I totally understand. Like, we booked our venue, like, nine months before, and we went to it, I think, um, a month ago, and we were like, okay, yeah, this is going to somehow work out, and it wow, is. So you, you girls are courageous. Yeah, you just got to make decisions when you're that busy, you know, because I was stressing about it for a long time. But anyway, congratulations, exactly. Kate. I think, 
I think the separation kind of helps with it because, I mean, when you only have three months, you just have to make decisions and you can't second guess yourself. It's kind of like Project Runway in a way. <laughs> yeah. Who is your favorite um, designer or bridal gown designer? My Who inspired favorite you? line is Marquesa. And Love Marquesa. It's, so it's two designers that work together, which is funny because normally I don't like teams, but working with <laughs> Helen, I kind of get it. It's like once you find that person who you can work with and you balance each other, it just, it helps. So I don't know. They're, they're my favorite line. I love to watch every season that they do because it's art. You know, everything is so intricate and it's, I feel like universally beautiful and I love to look at it. All right. Thank you so much. Virginia, you have anything else? To um, we just I just want to know, like, what are you up to other than your line? Like, is yeah, there anything we us, should be looking for or how can we find you? How can, you know, yeah, girls buy your dresses? Give us some info, your Twitter, everything. Yeah. Well, oh, my gosh. So much is going on right now. So my line is called Alea Von Bridal. And you can go on aleavon.com and see our current collection. And we're introducing a couple new gowns, probably three or four, and we're showing for the first time at National Bridal Market in New York, which I'm really excited about. Normally I show in Chicago, but this is going to be my first season in New York, so I'm freaking out a little bit, but I can't wait. That's awesome. Congrats. Aww. Thank you. And where can we find you? So you can find me on aleahvon.com. It's E-L-A-Y-A-V-A-U-G-H-N.com. And I'm really active on Twitter as well. So it's just aleahvon is the handle. And also Instagram. Every now and then you can see, like, new fabrics that I'm working with. And I like to run things by, you know, the fans and see what they think. Aw, Kate, thank you so much for joining us. We're a big fan. We love the look tonight. And good luck. We're looking forward to seeing more beautiful looks from you. Thank you so much. I would love to talk to you guys anytime. This was so much fun. Yes, awesome. come yes. in. Whenever you're in L.A., we want you in the studio. <laughs> awesome. Okay, I'll try to make it out so soon. <laughs> you don't have to talk me into it. I live in Chicago, so as soon as it gets, like, you know, below 70, I'm out there. Perfect. Oh, nice. <laughs> nice. Perfect excuse. All right. Have a good one. Thank you again. All right, how sweet is she? She is adorable. I love her. I know. So that and just she's really talented. I'm really loving her work this season. Yeah, so. I, I, I just really feel like the editing has got to be crazy because you know if she says Miranda really is that sweet, you know they just make. I, I just would feel bad if they made her look so awful if you know she isn't. Yeah. That well, sucks. I guess we will see more too. Yeah. It's still early in the season, so it you can't is. judge yet. So, since we have that, let's just get to the winners and the loser of the night. So, surprise, surprise. Sorry to cut this short, you guys. Surprise, surprise. Not really. Kate and Helen win with their beautiful red dress. The Woo. really structured, peplumish. I think it was well-deserved, too, because as fun as Dom and Alexandria's look was, I felt like Kate's was, or Kate and Helen's was just... I mean, that was really couture, beautiful pieces put together. The other one was just a little bit more fun. Yes, and it was made out of straw hats, for God's sakes. Yes. And it did not look Sombreros. that Sombreros. Like, who would have thought a sombrero could look like that? Wow, beautiful. And then the loser for the night was wah, wah. Timothy and Miranda. And Timothy goes home. Yeah, I think it was just his time. I don't think this is the right place for him he's been in the bottom three and i feel like he like he's very he's a good designer but he needs to mature yes exactly he's just not ready yet and we have to mention you kind of mentioned it kate was really sweet and she totally gave the win the win to helen she credited her with the design so that was really nice and helen gets immunity next week yep hmm. should be interesting and what else? Let's get into some news. I have some news good news. News and gossip. Yep. After Buzz TV All right. News. This past Monday, the 29th, was Tim Gunn's 60th birthday. So everybody, what? make sure to wish Tim Gunn a happy birthday. And last week, Project Runway uh, alumni and winner Christian Siri Siriano got engaged to his longtime boyfriend, Brad Walsh. They, enga they exchanged engagement bracelets, and they're thrilled. So congrats. Congrats. And lastly, um, there's going to be a docu-series on Ovation in December that is going to compete with Project Runway because 
it actually shows um, the mysterious process of choosing a recipient for the fashion fund, the Vogue slash CFDA's fashion fund. It's an award, and past winners include Alexander Wang, uh, Rag and Bone, and this process is going to be captured on the show. Some judges include Anna Wintour and Diane von Furstenberg. So it wow. should be really interesting. And the winner of this uh, prestigious award, the Fashion Fund, is going to get $300,000 and a one-year mentor mentorship, and I quote, with an industry titan. So this is the award. The Fashion Fund Award happens every year. They give it out at the CFDA Awards. But now we're going to see it documented for six episodes on Ovation. So should be good. Yeah, that should be definitely something for us to all watch. Yep, and make sure to tune in. I don't think it'll take Project Runway's place because they won't have Sandro. But uh, what are you gonna do? What are you gonna do? All right. So predictions. Predictions. Well, I predict that next and week, now, <laughs> Steph Z and Amanda TV. will be joining us. Predictions. Yes, we, we miss, miss our you, uh, guys. Sorry, we didn't mention that earlier. And I predict that Dom's going to do well and Sandro is going to win my heart even more so. Yeah, um, I I don't really know who I'm not feeling. I feel like everybody's kind of level because we're still in, you know, the first part of the episode. And like a lot of seasons, somebody always stands out right away. And I haven't felt like that about anybody. Dom, Alexandria and Brayden really stand out to me. Obviously, Kate and Helen are great, too. So it's going to be tough. I see a lot of talent this season, which is refreshing. Yeah, I'm really excited because last season was a snooze fest, I felt like. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> I still love it, but I was like, come on. No, let's be honest. This they, season's awesome. Yeah, they really shook it up. So, yeah, can't right. wait to see more Sandro. Let's tell everybody where they can find you. Uh, you can find me at Virginia Reina. And you can find me on Twitter at underscore Alina23. Thanks for listening, everyone. From Bing.com, executive producers Maria Menunos, Kevin Undergaro, Phil Svitek, and the entire AfterBuzz TV staff, we would like to thank you for listening to the AfterBuzz TV network. To watch or listen to other After shows and post comments or questions, be sure to visit AfterBuzzTV.com. I'm Sir Richard Wentworth, and this has been a presentation of AfterBuzz TV. Buzz, see you later. The views expressed herein are those of the hosts only and do not necessarily reflect the views of AfterBuzz TV or its owners or principals.